Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal. This is my tech channel. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a demo burn of a CD and I'm going to be adding some parody data. I feel like I did this way, way back in the day and just the mention of the name parody brings me back to memories of burning CDs on Napster. But par parity is still going in 2024. There are not really GUIs on Linux Ubuntu. Um, there, I think there is one for KDE, but uh, today I'm just going to be using the command line. So what I have in front of me is the uh, the man page for the PAR2 package. Um, and I'm just going to be using that. It's going to be very, I'm trying to keep this one very simple. I'm just going to be um, burning a CD containing this video backup for content creators, which I did uh, uploaded onto this YouTube channel last night. I've put a blank CD into the um, into the disk drive there, so that's ready to go. And I've kind of done this intentionally, where the CD is 700 megs, the video is 300 megs, so there's comfortable space uh, left for parity data of uh, about 400 megabytes. So before I do that, I want to just take a review, take a refresh on the man page. So um, once you install this package, I'm not sure if it comes by default with the repository or if you need to install it. Uh, but either way, once you get part two onto your system, you can use one of these commands, uh, part two create, and then to use the parity data to repair um, if something does go wrong, you can use these uh, these commands. But today we're just going to be looking at adding the parity data in the first place. So this is going to be adding parity data and we're going to be generating that as par2 files. And parity, for those um, who don't know, although I figure if you're watching this video, you do, we're basically taking the original file and creating some more files uh, based around that that can be used to detect damage. So just as you can use checksums, you can also use the parity data stored um, and to repair them. And that's something you definitely can't do with checksums. So you can actually use these kind of duplicate, duplicate, uh, this duplicate data to repair if the original one becomes corrupted. So the first step in doing all this process is to get the parity data onto your CD and or onto your optical media in the first place. Um, I'm just using a CD because we're just doing a small project and I'm, uh, this is for demos. So there are a few extra things that you can do to, to, to do a bit more uh, sophisticated. I always like to use this verbose operator minus V. Uh, so I'll be turning that on. And um, the very simple way to do this is part two, uh, then your uh, file size, sorry, part two, create um and then the uh, the source file and that will create parity data from that. So that's just just doing this as simply as possible. Uh, you can do this either for one individual file like my MP4 video, or you can do this for a archive file. So you could uh, create an archive to burn and then create parity on that archive itself. And as to how much data parity parity takes up this way. Uh, these part two files will enable the recovery up to 100 errors total totaling 40 megs of lost or damaged data so it depends how much you create the more you create the more you can fix at a later point um so there's kind of a balancing act of how much do you want to so this is obviously just kind of a safety mechanism um but it does let you create more and less the operator is minus r minus r followed by the percent of parity data that you want to create. The default is 5%, but you can say do more. So you can go minus R10 and minus R uh, here is level of redundancy in percentage. So uh, the block count can also be configured, the block size, the uniform identifier sizes. We talked about verbosity. Um, I always find these man pages kind of difficult to read because they're, they're very, I don't know, I just find them hard to read. Um, verifying and repairing so this isn't going to concern us in today's video uh let's just let's just do it as simple as possible uh we're going to go for part two create the file and uh then we're going to i'll do minus v as well to see if that throws up any more interesting output all right then so i'm in my uh directory that i'm going to be burning and i'm going to say par to create backup uh, minus V. 
and uh, this should be it. Whoa, excitement. Uh, so the block size was calculated, um, the source block count, the recovery file count. So it's by default, it looks at the file size and depending on that, it's going to, um, you can also configure this to create smaller or bigger parity chunks. So that took for 300 megs and I'm using, by the way, an i3 processor. So very much not uh, cutting edge technology here in the CPU. That took just a few seconds, didn't it? Um, so let's just see how big I've created it. So if it's 5% of 294, well, you can probably work that out, but uh, I can also just do it this way and calculate these files. And that came to 50, is calculating that to be 15, 16 megabytes, which just eyeballing that all looks a bit, looks a bit correct. So 300 megabytes of my file and I've gone with the default 5% uh, operator that has created 16 megs worth of parity data as a part two file. And now I have my part two files, I have my regular thing. And from what I understand, although there's some programs that uh, have tackled this, I think you're supposed to leave the, the parity files in the same uh, same uh, part of the file structure, the uh, the same folder. My my words are failing me. So I'm going to go now into K3B and try to burn all this stuff on, a, on my CD. All right, so... I'm in uh, K3B now and my CD is detected with 700 megs of space. Lovely. So I'm going to throw all that stuff in, the video, the party data, and what's it called again? Backup for content creators. Uh, this is just for test purposes, although I'll keep this in my CD archive and uh, see if, uh, if this party data ever actually proves to be useful. And I'm aware that because I'm leaving, I'm leaving like I could fit more parity data. I could fit 100% redundancy parity data here if I wanted to, uh, because there would still be room for that. But uh, I'm just going to go with the basic one because I don't really particularly care about the CD, but it's, I figured it would be a fun to experiment. All right. I always do this. It's a bit too long, the thing. So I was just going to chop a few characters off the volume, volume name. And uh, my burner spurs into life. And uh, now we are creating the CD. Okay, so we're just about finished up the burn. And as you'd expect, uh, this went totally fine. A uh, very small burning project and uh, had no trouble burning the parity, the parity files onto the disk. Now, there's just one thing I wanted to mention about parity data. So there's two approaches to it. One is that you burn the parity data onto the disk itself for uh, error correction if it goes bad. But you might be saying to yourself, well, what if the whole thing, the whole disk goes bad? Won't the parity data go down with the sinking ship? And the answer is yes, indeed it would. So uh, one option to, one, one way to do this that I thought I would just mention uh, for the sake of completion is to uh, store your parity data elsewhere. And you can, of course, do both approaches. So what you can do, I'll just bring my folder here. What I could do, and this would be one workflow, is just to bundle up my parity data, uh, backup for content creators. I'm going to scroll this underscore parity. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do this. And that's the parity data for that file. And then you could store that wherever you want. It could be on a separate disk, or you could put it on your NAS, etc. Uh, so that's an additional... I guess if we're going through all these steps, uh, people want to be uh, want to be want to be careful, and uh, so you could store it off off site, off the disk, on the disk, or both. You've got three good options there. Thanks for watching. Hope this is interesting. Until the next video.